Hello guys, in this video we'll do a setup for an application using a Turbo Repo. This app will have a React front-end and Express server back-end. Since there are two code bases, one for React app front-end and another for Express server back-end, we can either put them in a separate repositories and manage them separately, known as Polyrepo, or we can use a single repository called Monorepo. So Turbo Repo is supercharged mono repo, and here we are on the website turbo.build, and this project is maintained by Vercel. So let's click right here and go on a getting started. Learn more about mono repo. This page describes mono repo and a poly repo, and the main advantage of a mono repo is the ease of code sharing among your applications. It can be either functionality code, right, such as logger or UI components, or utility code, such as linters or testing. Main building block of the mono repo is workspace, and each application and package you build will be in its own workspace. Let's create a mono repo using a turbo repo, so, and we're going to be using one of the examples. We will use a kitchen sink example, and these are the apps that are in the package, and what we're interested is in is API, the Express Server, and also Admin App uses Vite and React. Turbo Repo has utilities such as TypeScript, ESLint, Jest, and Prettier, so which is perfect. That's the tooling we need to use, and we don't have to set it set them up from scratch. Uh, let's create to Baripo project here using the following npx command. And we will call our project React Express Turbo. So when we click enter and just wait till it downloads and clones the repo. So now we can cd in React Express Turbo, open it in the VS Code. Let's take a look at the project structure. The apps folder contains the applications, and then the packages folder contains uh, reusable code that can be, you know, reused, like for example, UI and logger. This is a functionality code and utility code such as ESLint, Jest, and config. Each of the workspaces, like we saw it before, has its own uh, package JSON file and it also has the name of the workspace. Besides that, on the root level, you also have a package.json file that will define the main uh, turbo commands like build, clean, dev, lint, format. And right here, it also contains pnpm lock files. You can use any package manager you want with a turbo repo, but it looks like they're more comfortable or like to use PNPM, and that's what we're going to use in our uh, tutorial here. But you can use NPM or YARN if you want. Let's start by removing the applications that we do not need. We can open our terminal and let's do rm rf apps blog. And we're also going to delete storefront. Now we're left with a admin and API applications. We're going to rename the API into backend. Also, since the package.json contains uh, the name of the workspace, we need to change it in the package.json as well. And admin will be our front end. And going into package.json instead of admin we can put front end. Let's save our changes. We also want to create that VS Code folder. And in this VS Code folder, we're going to create a new file called settings.json. And in this file, 
we'll put the following code. This will have editor format on, format on save, so it's going to use Prettier to format our code, and then uh, I'm also enlarging the font size for the editor and for the terminal. Since we removed Next.js applications, we don't need um, the linter for, for Next.js. So we need to go into ESLint, ESLint config custom workspace, index, and we're going to remove uh, next from here. ESLint config next is also contained in the package.json, so we need to remove it uh, from here as well. So we basically need to use pnpm remove command. In order for a linter to work correctly, we also need to add TypeScript ESLint plugin. Again, we're going to be using the pnpm uh, to add this plugin. And again, as you can see, I'm using filter to target the specific ESLint config custom workspace. Add uh, TypeScript ESLIN plugin in our configuration files and extends array. This plugin, however, will complain if we use TS ignore, so we need to add specific rule to turn it off. We are all set up updating structure of the project to what we need, and now we can run pnpm install. After all the packages are installed, we can run pnpm build. The build successfully finished. We can also run pnpm lint to lint our code. At last, we can run pnpm dev to look at our project. Right, this project is actually spun up uh, two servers, one on the host, local host 3001, and the other one on the 5001. On 3001, we have a front end, and on 5001, we have back end. In the browser, we can go to local host 3001, and we can see our application with a counter working. We can also go and check our 5001 host and it has a health Z endpoint. We can hit it and it's working as well. Our front end has an error, however, that we need to fix. So let's go back to localhost 3001 and if we go in a console we're going to see this warning. A render, a dumb render is not supported in React 18. Let's go ahead and fix this issue. In VS Code, we need to go to a main.tsx file, and it's located in front-end src directory right over here. And we need to update it so we don't use uh, the React DOM render. So what we need to do is to put the following code. Let's save it, and you can see got a new rebuild in the dev. So now we can go to the browser, and we can see that this error went away. So we can even refresh the page, and everything works great. Okay, we can control out of the development server, and now we can run pnpm test. All right, looks like our tests passed. We'll do git init to initialize the repository, git add, and git commit with the init stuff. All right, we're all done. The GitHub link will be in the description of the video. And thank you for watching, and until next time.